They came from the darkness. First a dot, then a glare, splitting into thousands of tendrils snaking across the stars. Left unchecked, the Tyranids would swarm and devour these worlds of man. This cannot happen. Chosen from across all chapters of the Adeptus Astartes, we are the angels of death. We are the nightmares of our enemies. We are the fine blade that pierces the heart. We are the Death Watch. And this sector will not fall. Indeed, it will not. In the grim darkness of the future, there can be only war. So today, my friends, we are exploring an old game that I recently have taken up again. And here is my team that I'll be showing you guys today. We're going to do sort of introductory mission. Before we start, I want to introduce my team here. This is the Wolf Pack, led by Logan Kols Skolskin. And I think we should start by looking at him. And I want to explain to you all about this game. It's an amazing game. It's called Death Watch. It's from 2016. So it's a little bit old, but not that old. And a worthy note uh, that it this is a an old game and it's a mess. It was ported from Android or tablet to uh, to PC onto Steam where I'm playing it now, and it's a mess of bad UI and bad game rules and in it and things that aren't explained to us and things that you can't click on and frustrations. But on beneath all of that, this is one of the best representations of. Space Marines in any video game ever. It really is super satisfying to play and the experience is so good. It makes Space Marines feel like Space Marines. So what we're looking at here is uh, one of my teams that I've selected for you today. And it, it, this is based on uh, 103 hours of play. Uh, it's been about a year since I played it for real last, but then I, last week I picked it up again because I've been reading the Horus Heresy and I really wanted to get some Space Marine action down. So this is it, and, and so here, let me show you a character. We st every mission will have five characters going on it. We're going on the first mission in the game on the highest difficulty. You have to complete the whole game at the lowest difficulty to unlock the next one, and then you complete the whole difficulty at me medium difficulty, the whole game on media difficulty, which I have have already done, and then I have completed half of the game, I think, on the highest difficulty, but can't finish it because you need to grind a lot and level your characters. So as we play through the campaign here, we will level some of my characters, and hopefully we can beat the whole thing in the end. Anyway, this is a character, Logan Skorskin. Now, worth noting about him is that he is has zero XP and is level one and has no st nothing unlocked because he is a new character that I've just unlocked, and he's a tier four character. Every uh, uh, character and every piece of equipment comes in one of four tiers. It's easier to show if I show you weapons. Here are all my four t tier four weapons. Then they come into tier four, tier three, tier two, and I have sold all my tier ones because you don't use them anymore. And likewise, my team here is consistent of Logan Skullskin, who we don't. He can't do anything special. He's got no special abilities, and his stats are trash. But they start at a high level because he's tier four and a hero tier. A tier for to, just for comparison, I consider tier one space marines to be like fresh marines right off the uh, initiate track and then on to go seeing battle for the first time. So they come in pretty poorly and they can't be upgraded that much. Just by comparison, if you look at tier four marine here. Then I'm selecting a tier 3 marine and he has way less abilities to unlock and his stats start at a lower rate. This is also a new marine because I, I've i selected a, an entire Space Wolf team for you today. Here's my other marines. Uh, this is the team that we're currently running. And then I'll scroll through the list so you guys can see my whole roster. Again, this is 103 hours of play that I've collected all of these marines. Uh, you will get more than these, but everything below tier 2 is subject to being deleted immediately or sold off because you can sell your marines for these points up here that you then use to buy packs with cards that are random and then you get new things. So recently I got Logan Scorchkin and despite him being 
not leveled at all yet. He's still pretty good and we need to get experience onto him so he can start unlocking his abilities. To compare with him with uh, one of my other characters that I'll show you now is Jürgen the Grey. Jürgen the Grey is a veteran of my campaigns here for a long time. He's level 25 in stats. He's got all his abilities unlocked and all war gear unlocked. And he still is saving up XP. Right, so we can't touch him. We can look at what he can do. Here are some good examples of abilities. He has two active abilities, which can be used uh, at a cooldown. So this one we, uh, cooldowns once every five turns, and it allows him to, you, without spending an action point, fire at all enemies in range. And he's got a flamethrower here. So he just sprays fire right, left, and center. And then he's got an, another ability, use at once every three turns, plus one AP, but take 20% of max health as damage. I don't use this one all too often, but... It can be a lifesaver where you need one AP to shoot or move into cover or whatever. Then all Space Wolves are... Uh, well, each chapter have sort of their own main gimmick and Space Wolves really like running around. So this guy has Feral Agility, which is always after if it's a passive. So every time he spends an AP to move, he has a 20% chance of not spending that AP. So he gets to, he can move further than normal and uh, any marine starts every turn with four AP unless they have extra coming from other sources. So with four moves in a turn, you can imagine that at least one of them will roll an extra so he can run f further than most other marines. And that's, this is sort of a space wolf thing. The others will get that in time. Then he has flamer specialization, which does more damage with flamers. And he's got killing blow. So that whenever he shoots at someone who has less than 50% health, he deals 50% more damage. Then he has three pieces of war gear. First one being the impedance field, giving 20% damage mitigation against all sources. Very nice. He has a stun grenade, which is uh, on a cooldown. I think it's five turns for a grenade to cool down so you can stun. And it's an area of effect. 50% chance to affect all adjacent units. It's not guaranteed, I didn't know. And then he's got Purity Seal Saga of the Iron Wolf. It's a once per mission thing, but then he gives two AP to all friendly Space Wolves on, on the team. So that's the entire team because I'm running a pure Space Wolf team. So that's Jürgen. He's sort of going to carry the whole team here because Yalmar Oslayer and Skull Starstrider, they are the same chassis as him, same... Uh, card, if you can call it that. He, they have the exact same uh, abilities that they can unlock, but they have both level 1. I've been on one mission with these two, and we can level them a little bit here before we go in. So here's a good example of how you spend XP. He has 2,500 uh, accumulated. For his best abilities and such, they are a bit more expensive. But the first war gear unlock costs 2,000. And Walker gear is quite nice. The next one will cost more. Or if you want to give him a level, the first one is 250 XP. I think we want to give this guy a war gear. So there, that spent 200 of uh, 2,000 of his 2,500. Uh, 2, then we still have enough to level him once. And we can see here his accuracy isn't that good. So we will up upgrade his accuracy a little bit. That's always good to get going at the start. Next level will cost 350. So it's going to be more expensive. And now he only has 315 experience left over. So every time they survive a mission, they get to keep the XP that they have earned, and then they can spend them off mission. If you die on a mission, if, the, and if any character dies, their experience will get set to zero. So it's a good idea to spend it instead of building it up, especially if you're going on dangerous missions. And that's just something to keep in mind. So we can give... Oh, we have another Saga of the Iron Wolf. You know what? Let's get another one of these in. So now we have two of them in play, which means we can give four AP to our team or two AP on separate occasions. That's going to be really nice. Skull of Star Strider is the same uh, principle. He is, he's got the exact same amount of experience as the other guy. We can unlock a War Gear Slav Farm and then we'll give him one accuracy stat. Now, this guy will also get Flamer Specialization later down the line, but we, he doesn't have a Flamer Specialization yet, so it doesn't give him anything extra. And I didn't have a... We only have one of these Flamer Kraken Breath Flamers, but I have a Tier 4 Plasma Gun, so I've given that to him. Every weapon also has sort of their own gimmicks, Plasma being that they can 
Uh, 15% chance that firing this weapon will cause it to overheat and become unusable for the rest of the turn. And every time you shoot with it, it fires three, uh, a volley of three in one AP. Then they have different range, accuracy, crit and crit damage. Some weapon cost more AP to fire, but that is specifically for uh, heavy weapons, which we also have one of. And you can, that's the secondary fire mode. And then this attack accuracy increased during Overwatch. That's for this weapon specifically. It has an ability that it applies to the champion while it's equipped. So he has increased accuracy uh, on Overwatch, which it doesn't just tell me how much that is here, but never mind that. We will give him a piece of war gear and maybe another stun grenade would be, it would sit well with me. So let's, stun grenades are really, really good for sure. Well, you know what, let's give him a damage grenade instead. It's more fun in the early games here, on the early, early stages of the campaign. We're gonna do mission one, chapter one, so it's not gonna be super diff difficult. That was the three guys. They are sort of the backup to uh, Logan's uh, whole attire here. He will outshine every one of these other guys in time, being tier four. We should cover their weapons. Both Logan and Yalmar here has the same weapon, and they this weapon gives the same thing that Jorgen has, giving a 20% chance to return AP for every time move, and it can only be wielded by a Space Wolf. Then boulders are special in that they have usually a pretty high volley count, and then if they are within half range of the weapon, so this one, if an enemy is within range, shit, range 3, and I'm shooting at it with this gun, it will fire 40% extra volleys, that means 40% of 4 is probably round down to 1, so it's 1 extra bullet if they are in with half range, but that's still good. That's all boldlers will have that thing. And then we have Njal Crowside who is hiding here in the back. He is also a tier 4 marine, and he is sort of getting a bit of level on. I've been using him a lot. He's my second to oldest uh, tier 4 unit uh, in, in total. And he's got this massive last gun that he loves to play with. So let's cover, let's start with that one. That one is the same as the boulders. It gives a 20% chance to return AP for every time move and can only be used by Space Wolf. Then last cannons have super high damage, but they t uh, cost three AP to fire and you get four as a base, right? So he needs to not move a lot and then shoot, or he can move his whole turn to set up for the next turn. So that's sort of, but he's got some abilities to co combo here. Range 12 is amazing. And then only 10% crit, but for 400% damage if it crits. So you can imagine that that'll be in above a thousand damage unmodified if the weapon crits, right? So keep that in mind. Then we're going into explaining Yal Crowside's abilities here. Let's have him aim down the sights and onto us here. That's a sight you don't want to see, but it's the last one you'll see if he ever if it ever happens. We've got preparation. Use one every two turns. He can carry all over all remaining AP to the next turn. So now you're seeing how that can help you set up and do a good shot. Comboing with that, we've got Dead Eye Shot that uses once every three turns, and you can hold off using one of these abilities to make sure that they overlap, right? So then you get 100% extra accuracy for one turn. So every shot will hit on that turn, so you sh save your AP and then take a, a guarantee to hit shot or multiple. Then he's got Beast Slayer. Use every once three turns. Uh, plus 20 crit per ch chance. Ch this is chance to crit. And plus 20% damage on large units until your next turn. So he... When he does the full combo, he slays beasts, as the title implies. Then he's got Brawler, which is weird, but usually heavy weapons guys are really tanky. So this is a tanky buff. He gets melee damage mitigation. He's got Covering Fire, always active. 30% chance that attacks on Overwatch cost 0 AP. And this is deceptive, because if it triggers, if you had two of these abilities and they triggered twice, then you would in fact gain a AP back, but that's an another story entirely. Then he's got last cannon specialization, that's why he has this gun. He does 15% extra damage on top of the damage down here to laser weapons. Then he's got wolf pack, always active, plus 5% damage for each space wolf on the team. And we have 5, that's 25% more damage, plus the 15, 
a total of 40% damage on top of the damage from the last cannon here. And he's level 13. He's got a war gear that is a an auspect. Auspex. It is a once per you once per turn, no, once per mission type of equipment, which gives the entire queen 80% higher crit chance to to all attacks during that turn. So I put that on my on him here because he really likes that. It's not well, you know what? At these levels, it's kind of wasted. Because everything that he shoots at at these levels, at the first level, will die. There's no large units on this mission. Well, let's just give him a, a plasma grenade as well. It's all good and well. And then, oh, oh, okay. So heroic and do do do. First mission. Oh, I should have read the mission description. But he there's a little intro at the start. You can sell space marines at war gear for extra requisition points. And I've saved up some requisition points so we can open a few packs at the end of the episode. I hope that will be fun. So you guys to get to see how that system works and all the things. And I'm planning on going through the entire campaign on heroic difficulty. Just one episode for each mission. Should make for some good space marines content. I hope you will agree. Check that I am recording. So I've had some issues recording this game. It's not, not my first attempt, but it looks like everything is working. Oh, maybe not. Now, in or trying to alt tab, I may have destroyed the whole thing. chamber must be contaminated with the atrophying agent. Begin the process by pouring the flasks into the pools. Expect heavy resistance. Alright, so I don't know if we caught all of that, but first mission is fairly basic. Yeah, we have to get a space marine to each of these four skull icons. That is the mission objective. It's kind of like a board game in that sense. Just a single player board game. Here's our team. And Scout Starter, Yama Allslayer, where's Jurgen? Jurgen is the highest level in the team and he definitely will carry us for a while. So let's move him forward. He's got that thing where he can shoot at all enemies. We see our first enemy. This is a Termagond. And we are up against Turinids for the whole thing here. This is a little Turinid with a gun. A bioweapon. Won't be a thing. All right, so now we can see three different guys here. This is a pretty good setup for using the free fire ability if we go one more he will see this tile too but it's empty okay we see another enemy here but the pink line here is his range so we can't hit this guy down here with the free fire i'm pretty sure he will attempt to fire at it anyway and flame as a cool they pass through enemies so if anyone was behind them here they would also take damage as he does fire at the guy that is in sight, but not in range, which is kind of funny. So, the thing about the whole uh, leveling business is that Jurgen levels really slowly at the point that he's gotten to. He can't buy new abilities, he can only level up. What I really want is for the other guys to get more experience, especially... Where is he? Logan Skullskin. We need to get him as many XP as we can, and last hitting gives you more XP than than the other guys get. So I will attempt, let's see, it's more likely that we finish off this guy here if I walk one more, like this. He gained 240 XP, everyone else gained 60 XP. So he gained more for that. And look at that, this guy behind him was already damaged. Now, Logan here has used all his AP. So we need someone else to come up and steal some kills here. Yolma also there. And this is a Hormagon, by the way. This is the only two enemy types that we will be encountering at this point. This guy has lost an AP from Jorgen's... Uh, he has a 2% chance to reduce target's AP by one per shot. I don't know if I cover that in the intro, but whatever. Oh, 
Yalmar Old Slayer moves up. This is his uh, war gear that we gave him to, to him. It's a once permission thing. Let's see if we can kill the next in line here. Maybe Jurgen can weaken them up a bit. I'm fairly sure he would kill them though because of his bonus against lower, uh, lower health targets. We can use a grenade here. That would be fine, I think. We didn't quite kill it, but this should finish it off. Oh, but they miss a lot, these new recruits. Let's see if we can use the big shot here. He will use all his AP into one shot, and if it hits, it will deal good damage. Yeah, it fitted quite, quite well. It did about 200, and he had about 200. Now, Crow side in the back, he can just save all his AP for next turn. And let's see, we move Jurgen on. Okay, no more AP, but we'll throw a stun grenade. Let's throw it here. I've never seen it not stun everyone adjacent, so maybe that's an incorrect description, but that may be me not knowing everything. So these two should be stunned now and not acting. Oh, we had another enemy behind me here that I didn't see because of the wall. Whoops. So we're already taking some fire. And with all of my guys being so low level, we are kind of in danger of losing at least one guy. This was a few shots from one Horm uh, Termagond, so dangerous. Let's see. We weaken them up with Jurgen or murder them if we can. Sometimes he will one-shot them. Let's move a little bit up. As then his weapon will harm anyone standing on this tile as well. Okay, he didn't die that time. Let's see if we can kill steel with Skull Star Steiner here. Do that again. Yep. All right. Now this guy in the back. I think we can get him with Nyal. Yes, we can. Come up here, Nyal. Nyal. It's a hard word to say. Name. Cross. Crossight. Is easier. Maybe I should call him Crossight. All right. So he has uh, four AP still remaining. That's fine. We will just do one shot with 100% accuracy. Bye bye. Turn it. Bam. One shot it. Yeah, my own slayer comes over here. <laughs> oh, so many misses. They need you need to upgrade accuracy at lot in the beginning. Otherwise, this is what happens. It'll be easier after a mission or two because they level pretty fast at the beginning. So it's fine that we're doing this on mission one. Good. Let's see, Jurgen can take this spot here. He retained that AP, that's good. And this is what it looks like when you complete the first objective. Every mission will be different. And they're pretty good at level design, even though the levels don't look that pretty. It, uh, they are very different in nature and often kind of engaging, at least. Do we want to try to move on here? There could be enemies sitting in this corner here, so moving closer will just give them easier access to my guy. Logan also retained his AP for moving. He can keep moving then. We'll move around. Ah, okay, then he's out. Okay, good. Hopefully Jurgen doesn't die. Logan, no! We don't have any healing at all, I think, with us. That's, catch that's actually a mistake. I'm supposed to bring at least some healing. So, whoops. It's a fairly short mission. I hope we can make it through. I forgot to use the rest of Nyala's AP as well, so I'm making really bad plays at the moment. Okay. Oh, he still has three AP. He might have a shot right here. I was going to move on with him, but I think we should take the shot if we have it. Yes. Go for it. And one-shot it. Nice. He does have a mischance there, so... It wasn't guaranteed. Okay, let's move over here. Oh yeah, there's two here, okay. 
Uh, let's see. Do this one. Okay. Well. I'm trying to think of whether or not I can feed a kill to one of the other guys here. They would need to retain their AP for moving if they want to make it all the way. Which this guy doesn't do that at all, so we don't want to try moving with one of those that do have that ability. It's here. Yes, you can see down here during the game. You can't read what active abilities does while you've started a mission or after you've started a mission. So here's an example. He moved and retained his AP. So now he has enough AP to come down here and steal this kill. Which he just not needed to land one bullet for it to work, and it, he did. So that was good. Okay, we got that one. Then we. Which way do we run with Logan? Maybe run with the group. I know I ran him up here, and then that was a waste of AP then. So we'll, we'll do it safe anyway. Oh, we've got more here. Oh, and two shooters. You know what? He's been pretty badly wounded. I'm gonna have to move back here. Yeah, and more back. Okay. That was a waste. Oh, you can. <laughs> back where he started. Okay. Because then Star Skull Star Strider can move up. Okay. I don't want to lose him. We really need, uh, need him to survive so that he gains, retains the AP, uh, the XP, to level a bit. That's why I did a mission with the two other guys here, just to give them a little bit of accuracy at the start before doing this uh, video for you guys. And then I rolled uh, him in a pack, so then I couldn't not play. Uh, yeah, I didn't see anyone here. No, I'll retain his AP for next turn where he's gonna get the accuracy thing. Okay, Jorgen, you gotta move on. Then, yeah, take it. See, he's gonna have to move that way up. And then he has one chance to hurt and kill this Termagond. Let's do it. Yeah. This could be a turn where we get two extra AP from it for everyone. Let's try shooting at this guy. Oof, that is frustrating. No hits. Okay, we are hitting a little bit. He's standing in the way of the other guys. So he kind of needs to move back here. Logan comes up. Your turn. Do me proud. Ah, oh, he didn't get it. Okay. Then we gotta try again. Take one shot here. And evaluate. Do we attempt to finish or go to cover? Let's use the one that gives two AP to everyone here. Because then Jorkin can also kill his opponent. And take the objective. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. We are inside a Tyranid hive ship, so that's why you hear a heartbeat. In case you were wondering. Y'all got some extra AP too. Now Yalmo needs to move out of the way because otherwise he right now he's you can't walk even though this is uh, a free space and you can walk around corners like this he wouldn't have been able to go here before because you can't move in between two blocked spaces same here you can't move forward now you need to move him further so we do that this guy can come up we really need to kill this Termodon. We didn't get him. Alright. We get one shot at him with Logan. He's only got 106 HP remaining. Oh, can you see him from here? Oh, you can throw a grenade at him. Perfect, y'all. Thank you. Alright, I think we move Logan behind the back, actually. The safe path. Follow Jurgen. 
He was lucky with his AP there. Good. Good enough. We can turn the camera around like this. Oh, there's two in the corner there. But the, uh, uh, melee enemies are different because this guy will need to attack. They need to go one. They want to get four AP as well, right? So one, two, three, three maybe to move here. And then they can do one attack on Yao. Uh, ranged enemies are way more dangerous because they only need to get in range and then they can use the rest of AP to attack you. See, they didn't get to attack at all. They will get to attack after that, but now Nyal is gonna move and he can basically kill both. But I do want to try to get the kill with one of my other two guys. Use the grenade. I'm pretty sure this is not an area of effect grenade. Otherwise, we will learn that I'm wrong. No, nope. it was an, a non area of effect grenade. Good, good. Now, you can take the front. One more turn, and then he's got his free fire up again. Now, I know we have to extract up here when we are done with the objective, so we can't just go to the objective and expect everything to be fine. I'm pretty sure there are still more enemies as well. We haven't spotted them yet, though. You never know which move is going to be the one that gives you vision. That's why I'm doing it cautiously. Get another one here. Still nothing. There's one. Okay, let's stun it. It will also stun anyone here, just in case. And do I dare move another space up here? There might be enemies in there. No. This way. All right. Closing in on the end of the first mission. Good, good, good. Let's take the front with Jürgen. Is anyone in the corner here? Yes, okay. We definitely need to use free fire. We could do that better. We could do that in here. Oh, one more, okay. So then I know that if I move here, I also get to hit the guy in the back here. So now, now we need to clear this area, otherwise Jürgen dies, but I think it should be doable. Oh no, did I just kill... Oh, it might not... I'm not sure if it goes through walls, but I'm not sure it doesn't. So I thought maybe I'd have killed Logan here. <laughs> oh boy. I didn't though, it's fine. Okay, we got that kill. This guy is not wounded yet, but if we go up one further, then this guy is. We got him. Oh, we should try to hurt both again through here. Oh, but there was another one. Look at that. Flamers are so good. We don't. We are doing the two extra AP for every everyone though. So even Logan here will have a good chance of killing one. Uh, okay, maybe Jürgen tries to soften it up a little bit for him. <laughs> he did that. This is one more. Okay. They were really hiding back here. Let's see. He also only gets one shot even if he goes around the corner. Oh, but he got an extra AP for moving, right. Come on, kill it. We did it, good. And I don't think enemies spawn on this mission, so there's nothing to stick around for. Some missions you can stick around and uh, farm some XP by, from the spawning enemies. But in this mission, I'm pretty sure it's set. It's also the first first mission, as I said. So, yeah, pretty clean, all things considered. We can't move into the goal right now, but... 
done. Logan follows up and we can level our guys and we'll open some packs and then declare that to be the first episode of Death Watch Enhanced Edition. All right. And we got another saga of the Iron Wolf. Perfect. Yeah, tier four. Like you, you cannot imagine how rare it is that I get tier four equipment. So that was a really, really lucky draw. Very, very nice. Me happy, and we will equip that on someone. So that's a super good piece of equipment. Two extra AP for the entire team. That's 10 AP for your team. And you use it when you're in a pinch. So it's just a perfect item. And it's so Space Wolf. They love just having tons of AP to move around and do whatever they want. Next up, next episode is going to be... Uh, maybe I should I tease it? Yeah, whatever. Next, next episode, uh, episode we're doing uh, the Space Smurfs. Ultramarines team. They are very, very different. They rely on teamwork, staying close together, and then overwatching a lot. They really like that kind of thing. Overlapping fields of fire and that kind of thing. So, Space Marines. Let's level our guys. Let's start with Logan. I'm sure everyone's mostly excited about him. Now, we can't get an ability for him yet, but again, a piece of war gear is just really nice. Uh, but though... Honestly, accuracy. No, you know, we, we go war gear because then I can give him a great grenade, um, which is also really nice for last hitting. And it doesn't cost an AP to fire it off, and then he doesn't have any XP to level any further. Yamba Old Slayer probably just needs some more accuracy, if anything, so they hit a little bit more, do more consistent damage, is really, really good in the start. To just make sure that they actually hit when you order them to fire and we can level again let's just go accuracy you can see his calculated accuracy down here it's with the weapon and different weapons will have different accuracy so you shouldn't look at the accuracy up here but that's fine then scarf strike style basically same principle in here Give him some accuracy so they do more consistent damage and are more reliable on missions. Now it's 1,250 for the next one here. Then Yal Crossite though. 6,000 XP is not enough to get... Let's see, this one needs 20,000. We we've already went over his other things, but the ones we are lacking here is Improved Metabolism, which is one extra AP every turn. Amazing. And then he can get regenerative implants at 12,000 XP for healing 5% of max health at the end of your turn. Also amazing. He's got 305 HP at the moment. And the next war gear slot also costs 12,000. I am inclined to try to save up XP with Nyal and let's do it. Let's just do it. It's going to take a few missions, but then we can at least give him regenerative implants, which is an amazing skill to have. So let's do it. Good. Then, before we end, I want to go and open those packs. We have 400, and we need 100 for every pack. So I've been holding off my... I've been ex about to explode inside, but I, I kept my word to myself and saved um, the XP, or the, the requisition points. So here we see Medipack at Tier 1, which is bad. We can't use this item. It's going to be sold. Every card sells for 4... Requisition or Marines sell for six requisition, no matter what tier the, the different cards are. That's always the same. Veteran of the Ultramarines here, I already have a one of these guys, and this guy is probably just an excess. Also tier two. And Kate's arrow, this is the fourth one I have of these then. So we can I use I use one on my Ultramarine team, and they are not bad, but I have like four of them, as I said. So whatever. Next. And we have Purity Seal, Oath of Fervor. 2 AP, but take 20% of health as max as damage. Of max health as damage. Uh, it's a one to, and when it's written like this, it's a once per mission ability. A tier 1 Devastator of the Space Wolves is going to be deleted. And the Incendiary Grenade is just tier 2. We 
we've got a Puri Seal Litany of Execution. 25% accuracy to all friendly units until your next turn. And that's again once per mission, but it's not a trash ability. Another one of these. We this that's the one we just had three on on a team. Then we can, now we can make a full team of these guys and then Yal Cro no no then it would be without Yal, but then with Logan at the front. That would be kind of cool. Without the Devastator, just have a full movement squad. With the uh, with the wolf helmets, that's kind of cool. I like thematic builds in this game. For sure. Alright. And the tier 1 plasma cannon is trash. Photon flash grenades is a lower tier of the stun grenade. And I have plenty of stun grenades. And then this guy I have plenty of already. Here you can see sort of how he works out. And you can pause the screen if you wanna. But eventually I am gonna run a, what's a, what are they call They're called Black Templar squad. And I think, honestly, that may be the one. We have, I have three. <laughs> I already had three of that one, one guy. And then we now we have a fourth. But that's tier, tier 2 is the highest I have of that chapter. And then I think I have one more. Yes, that one here. So now we can... Now I have one here as well. Okay, so I had enough for a full team. But now we can do a team with four uh, assault marines in that. One of them is pretty high level already. I think that's Gerhard. I used him for a while. He's 16 and has all, everything unlocked except his war gear. The others will not have been leveled. But we could do like a Black Templar. Is that what they're called? I always forget. He is a Black Templar, yeah. Alright, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. More coming soon. And with those words, I'll sign off. Bye-bye.